holidays are doubly important this year, so make your celebrations doubly special. At Kroger, we've got a huge selection of high-quality meats on top of fresh, natural produce, like fresh, never-frozen prime-grade beef and our Simple Truth Organic Brussels sprouts, or delicious king crab legs with our private selection gourmet potatoes. Whew, had to say that doubly fast. Kroger, fresh for everyone. And now you'll find more ways to save on your favorites. When you download digital coupons, you can use up to five times in one transaction. Kroger, fresh for everyone. The following podcast is not affiliated with the developers who have created the games being reviewed. The reviews are solely the opinions of the hosts to be used to make an educated decision on what games to download and play. Hello gamers and welcome to Budget Arcade, the number one free-to-play gaming podcast in the world. I'm Scott. My name's Jeff. Uh, I'm, I'm Mark. Uh, dude, that's about right, I think, with the way he's sick, right? Yeah, anyway, Mark's not here. He decided to be sick today. And uh, I wonder if it's this game that made him sick. We'll discuss Scott and I. And um, without Mark here, I have a feeling it's going to be a whole lot less yelling. Possibly. I mean, I could tr- probably trigger you some, too. Yeah. I don't know. So It has to be natural, you know? Yeah, I guess. Uh, so this is uh, episode number 102, and... Uh, just the just Founding recap, Fathers. Yeah, just to recap, we play a free-to-play game every other week, and then we rate and review it. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, do you have the game pulled up? <laughs> oh, no! I wasn't prepared for this! We're a mess without you, Mark! We're a mess. We play. You're the info guy. Where uh, are the, you? I have never been the info guy. Three co-hosts, and I've never been the info guy. What is it? Final. Fan. What's the name of this thing? Fantasy. Final Fantasy VII, Seven. The first soldier. The first soldier. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going right to the the who the hell knows. Uh, I'm just going to read this directly from the fandom wiki for the game. Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier is a free-to-play Battle Royale multiplayer game for mobile phones. Released in 2021, developed by the A-Team. Oh, B.A. Baracus. I'm old. Uh, And published by Square Enix. Uh, The game is set. Mr. T. Yes, correct. Mr. T. Uh, Well, you're as old as I am, so of course you would know what the A-Team is. Uh, the game is set 30 years before the events of Final Fantasy VII, before Soldier was established. I don't know which Soldier is, uh, because I, the Final Fantasy games are too long for me to ever finish. Well, you're also not a big JRPG person. There is that. That's part of the problem. I, I've only played a couple of the Final Fantasies, and Seven was not one of those. Yeah, f- I've played Seven, and I got out of Midgar or whatever the first area is, and then I never played it again. And uh, the one I played the most is Four on the DS, and I think it's just because it was on the DS, and I always had it with me, and uh, the graphics were pretty good for the time. But Final Fantasy is just not one of those series that does anything for me. So I. I um, I guess we're in gameplay. Gameplay. Yeah. So, this, you, so, yeah, this isn't a regular, this isn't like a regular Final Fantasy at all. I didn't. Okay. So I, and you, I, all right. I texted you and you said, or I said, oh, man, this is a battle royale. And you're like, yeah, Elliot said that. Well, I didn't hear that part. I just booted up the game and started playing. And I'm like, jumping into a landing zone and I'm looting like a battle Royale. And then some guy shoots at me and I shoot back at him. And I'm like, what is this PUBG? What is this? 
And then on my second go round, I'm like, yeah, it's just a battle royale. And I, for, for some reason, Final Fantasy and Battle Royale didn't seem like one of those genres that I would have mixed together or uh, IPs I would have mixed together with, uh, you know, Battle Royales. And so it kind of threw me a bit. And then once I wrap my head around it, because like you start off creating a character. And I'm expecting an RPG because it's fine. Yeah, you f- customize the character, too. Right. And it it there's a decently robust suite to do so and i created my character and so i'm thinking this is going to be i really thought this was just like a final fantasy version of genjin impact is what i was expecting and what i got was a battle royale yeah i guess we should go over what the differences of this battle royale is compared to others because you know we've done so many battle royales oh. it's- I don't, I hate, tried and true on how you know how to play it. Yeah, I'm so disgusted with s- describing what a battle royale is. If you don't know, go on YouTube, okay? But the short of it is a group of players drop on a map and kill each other one by one until there's one victor on an ever-shrinking map. And that remains okay. true here. Yep, and so the differences on this one are you start, it's uh, 75 players. The dropping in, you go in a helicopter, but you can actually control the helicopter right. where you want to go, and you have 40 seconds from the start of being able to control it until you are thrown out of it um, at the end of the timer. Basically. I like that a lot. I thought that was a cool addition, and the first time I played the game, I didn't know, but then when I played my second game, I noticed the up and down buttons displaying on the screen. Like, this is only on mobile, so everything is touchscreen. And I was like, what does that do? And it lowered and raised the helicopter. I'm like, oh, and then I used the virtual left thumbstick, and I could fly it where I wanted to go. I thought that was a great idea. Uh, Yeah, I don't think there's another battle royale that takes that. I think it's all, you're on a plane, and it's going a specific way. Yeah. But did you notice, like, around the map when it starts, there's, like, these little points all around the map, those are different drops for other players. So you're not actually being put into the map in the same spot as everybody else. Like if you're, say, a war zone, everybody's on the same plane, and wherever you jump out, you know, if other people jump out with you there, that's where they're going to be. Uh, this game, however, had different drop zones throughout the map, and then yours would come up and show which direction your helicopter was going to be heading in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't comprehend that aspect of it um because i just thought i just there's so many things about battle royales that i just assume are going to be the case so i didn't really know what those were i thought maybe they were like contracts or something like you would see in a in a a war zone uh now they have weapons and as far as i can tell the weapon system's kind of closer to what you'd want to see or what you would see in like a Fortnite, where it's color-coded weapons Um, Yes, it's not as verse. mm, What's the word I want to use? It's there isn't the sheer amount of weapons like you would get in a war zone or even a pub loadouts. Right. It's more of like there's a light machine gun and then there's like three or four classes of that light machine gun. And of course, this is a fantasy realm, so they're not really modeled after any true to life guns. Uh, And there'd be sniper rifles and there'd be four classes of that sniper rifle like Fortnite, and they're color coded in the same way and the game actually auto loots for you to a degree it yeah picks- kind of like PUBG mobile did yeah and it needs to i think i think mobile battle royales need to remove as much button interaction as possible from what you're doing so if you walk over a gun it'll pick it up automatically and then If you stand over a gun and you already have one, you have two weapon slots. You can tap on the gun you want to drop. So all of that works really well. Uh, I find the looting system to just work for mobile. And I think that's the best you can say about it. Any Battle Royale looting system on mobile is going to be less than desirable because you'd rather have a more tactile way to interact with your inventory. But this at least functions and that's about as good as it's gonna get on a mobile battle royale yes now and 
With the weapons as well, uh, because it is Final Fantasy, you have magic abilities that are scattered throughout the maps as well. Um, I believe there was a fire ability, there's a wind ability, there was lightning, there's a poison, there's a a smoke screen. Um, I got one, and this was like super OP. It was a meteor, and the meteor was, even at level one, it was a purple class Mm -hmm. so that would have been just below the highest tier of spell and so but this thing was insane it would drop this just a shower of meteorites on the ground in this area effect and just decimate anything that was in that area effect i that match i think i got seven kills and it was just because of this one spell but i've only gotten that spell one time and I only got that spell from completing a contract. Um, there's also... So in Final Fantasy VIII, you could have what was called the Guardian Forces. They were a summonable... Uh, basically like a minion that would come and fight for you. This game has these as well. Um, I haven't figured out how to pick those up. I did get Ifrit one time on a match, and I don't even know how I got him. I think it was... A contract that I completed as well. Um, oh, we also should note that there are classes before you right. start the match. Now, I didn't gather a lot of what, the, like, I played Ninja and I played Warrior, and the only immediate difference I could see was your melee weapon. So there is a melee portion of this. Uh, like, the Warrior has a sword, and then I played Ninja, which had, like, this giant four pronged star attack thing. I don't know what you call it. There's probably a word for it. But other than that, is there a difference in the classes? There are. So I played mostly Monk and also Warrior, but I noticed that... So the Monk has a a healing ability that automatically kicks in after you've taken damage. Uh, The Warrior has like a dash that shields him. Uh, The Monk also has a a shield that he can throw down on the ground. Um, But there's like a Mage class, there's the Ninja class, the Warrior class, the Monk class, and... There was a fifth one, but I can't remember what that one was. But yeah. yeah, each each class has a different like subset of abilities that it has that gives you, you know, kind of an advantage depending on what the class is. And I'll be honest, like most people that I went up against were playing warrior. And if they got in close with that sword, you were pretty much hosed. If they knew to use it. Yeah, if they knew to use <laughs> yeah. it. So, but a lot of them would like, they would like do the roll maneuver towards you and then dash with their shield up and then start hacking away at you. And like, if you're not good at aiming in this game, you're going to get destroyed pretty quickly on that. Yeah. And so um, there's also a leveling mechanic where, cause there's NPCs, uh, enemies you can fight on the map that aren't human yeah, players monsters. Uh, and you gain experience and other things from defeating them. Now you mentioned shooting. And the game, this is where the game kind of starts to fall apart for me, is on the controls. And I think it's not because this game particularly does it bad. It's just that it's a first-person shooter on a mobile phone, and that's just hard to do. It tries to get around this by offering an auto-shoot mechanic, whereas as long as your reticle is over the enemy your gun will fire for you. And while I think that's the best way to be successful in the game, it did take some of the um, feedback out of the game for me where it felt like I was doing the work and actually playing the game. And it was like either turn that on and be successful or turn it off and lose. See, it's, I had it off. I turned off the auto fire. I put it in more of a, a floating fire mode. There was like three different fire modes that you could pick from. And the floating fire mode seemed to work best for me um, because it would allow you to like lead people because there's there was kind of a bit of lag in this game. I don't know if you experienced that, Jeff. That was the other thing. And I was going to ask you because we were playing on both Pixel phones. Um, mine's a little bit newer. And I was wondering because even on... Oh, yours is three generations newer. Yeah, mine's came out this year. So it's a modern flagship smartphone. 
and it ran kind of bad. Now, I don't know if it was the net code because the whole game is online. So uh, it's hard to say if it was just the online that was bad because it's all online. And I felt like the frame rate was bad and that might have just been lag. And I felt like when there was someone on screen that they kind of skipped and jumped. Yes. But not as I got bad. skips whenever I engaged any enemies. Yeah. And it wasn't like crazy bad. Oh, terrible lag skipping like when it's really in the toilet. But it's yeah, just kind of this... rubber banding, but it was almost close. Yeah. But it was like persistent while you played the whole time. Every time I interacted with another person or another player, I got this jerky sort of if I were I would call it frame loss almost where they would just kind of not and it makes it really hard to hit them in a game where you need to be able to shoot them as fast as possible to ensure you don't die it kind of created a lot of problems for me with the gameplay um and what is otherwise like interesting kind of ideas for a battle royale when I start playing it, though, that's when it's like, okay, this is not even like if we go back to the PUBG mobile or uh, the Call of Duty mobile. Did we play that for this podcast? I can't yeah, we remember. Did. We did. I remember specifically the Call of Duty mobile actually playing pretty well for yes, that one did play really nicely. A mobile first person shooter. And this is doesn't play well it is a third person shooter you can go into aim down sights and all of that but that's just one more button you have to press before you engage in a fight and i think it it, and which is normally not a big deal but on a smartphone it is yeah and this this feels probably most like the PUBG mobile because of that third person view and then going into your if you look down sights and it's first person yeah i would agree with that Whereas the um, uh, Call of Duty mobile was all first person. Yeah, and it just felt smoother. And it felt there were times I forgot I was playing on a mobile device with the the Call of Duty one. So and I guess you can maybe chalk it up to the pedigree of Call of Duty. Whereas this, you know, I don't Final Fantasy and Square Enix aren't necessarily known for first person or third person action shooters. And they're more uh, like we talked about the RPG folks. So, Cancer. So many lives are touched by cancer. In fact, one in two men and one in three women will be diagnosed with cancer. At the American Cancer Society, we're on a mission to free the world from cancer. It's a big mission, driven by little things like a ride to treatment, a free place to stay, a 24-7 helpline. But these little things are really the big things because to a cancer patient and their family, they're everything. And every day we reach thousands of cancer patients who so desperately need these services. But we need your help to get these critical services to more people and families in need this holiday season. Go to cancer.org and join the fight against cancer. It takes just minutes to donate and help provide essential support to cancer patients and their families. Don't wait. More than one in three people will be diagnosed with cancer. Go to cancer.org right now and make a difference. Go to cancer.org. I think we've covered everything that's different in this versus other battle royales, I would think. Yeah, I think so. Paywall. What is this? Paywall? Uh, to be honest, I didn't look at the paywall. Um, I imagine I, it's cosmetics. <laughs> I did look at it a little bit. Um, it is cosmetics. There was, um, there was a few things that you could actually earn. Like, I know I earned some tickets um, throughout gameplay, but there's, there's a lot of um, unlockables that you can get, and it's all cosmetic. Like, I unlocked a couple of different vehicle uh, skins that I could use. Uh, you can unlock uh, the chochabos. To be able to call just them in so you and... don't get emails, Chocobo, Chocobo. Oh, is that how it's pronounced? I believe so. Okay, either way, either way, yeah. the birds, the yellow the birds, ostriches, Ostr- the ostriches. Okay, yeah, there you go. Yeah, let's just get the emails. The ostrich. You can ride that Final Fantasy ostrich that's so famous, the Chocobo, yep. and then. Um, 
Yeah, and there was different ones you could get. Those were gotten through eggs that you use your in-game currency to purchase those. But yeah, there was there was a premium currency, and that was used to purchase everything else. And there was like battle passes. There was a mm-hmm. Christmas pass. There was uh. <laughs> it's all passes basically. Yeah, but. I kind of wish someone would innovate the microtransaction. This isn't specifically a criticism for this game, but uh, I mean, a Fortnite. I, I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they invented the battle pass and everybody's copied it probably because it's extremely successful, but I'd like to see someone take it to the next level. Cause I really don't have any desire to buy any battle pass from any game anymore because I just sick of battle passes. I'm sick of looking at them. I'm sick. The of next sh- level will be when they turn them into NFTs. That'll be the next level. Well, I don't know much about NFTs, but I do know that I'm sick of battle passes and it'd be a cool idea to figure out a new way to monetize your game. Please. Yeah. Someone. Right. Probably hey, epic at some this point. This one is it. actually doing a Fortnite style battle pass, so it's not as intrusive as a lot of these other games we oh, played. Yeah, I'm just critiquing battle passes in general. Um I don't really have a huge problem with them other than I'm sick of looking at them. But they tend to be usually your best value for money as far as buying cosmetics. Um, and they encourage you to play the game and add objectives and things to do. So I, I don't have a problem with battle passes other than that. They're just so ubiquitous now. I'm sick of them. Replayability. All right. So replayability. Um, I'm going to say that's pretty replayable because with each class, you could level up mm-hmm. the class. And as you leveled up each class, you would gain things like um, your banner that you could put with your name whenever you're in game. So whenever you killed somebody, it would show your banner. Um, But there was different like customizables on that, that you could get through leveling your different characters or not characters, but your classes. And then there was some skins that you could get as well. Um, I think the max level for each character was like 60, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I I could be wrong. I, I only went into it a couple of times, but there was, there were some pretty nice things in there, like the the top tier like gave you some pretty good skins, even to put like clothing on your character, so you could completely customize your character because you've leveled up the uh, class so much. Yeah. Uh, um. There's also, you know, you got your choke or choke. Huh? Cho- what was that? Yeah, your, your ostriches. ostriches. Yep. Your ostriches. You you could you could uh, breed your ostriches if you had a male and a female, and that would create a new egg and. Sometimes the egg would be better than the the, the previous ostriches. Um, you could put saddles on them and all that, and you could earn those from you know different uh, unlocks from leveling up your characters. Yeah, and I mean it's a battle royale formula, which is generally speaking endlessly replayable because you're playing against other people, and they add an infinite amount of variables into every game. I also, the, the, the flying of the uh, helicopter allows you to explore the map more easily. Like you're not so dependent on your start point as to where you're going to actually want to start your game. Um, I mean, the only thing holding back the replayability is probably the most important part, uh, which is the gameplay. Oh, you know what? The one thing we didn't talk about, I don't know how far you got into matches, but I think towards the end of a match, there would be a boss monster that would spawn on the map. And you had the option to go and try to kill that because it would give you like some massive loot yeah. that would help out uh, immensely. Um, Yeah, I mean, I think that the weapon system doesn't necessarily offer a lot towards the replayability because it is pretty simple. But a more complex one would be frustrating in a mobile game. Uh, So I can't really fault them too hard on that. Uh, But I do think when you land, there's a lot of different ways to approach things. You can go after a player first, or you can spend some time looting, or you can go after monsters. So it offers you a different way to play when you drop in, uh, which I think is good. And and does add to the replayability. Yeah, and also when you kill monsters, you earn gill. And you were able to take that to the, they were like drinking uh, machine or uh, soda machines that you could like 
upgrade your weapons on as well as like purchase better weapons stuff like that there was a couple like you had purchase your um there's like necklaces that you could get that would give you certain buffs but you could get those throughout the maps as well um i do want to say though there is no bots in this game and i know this because there was times i would queue up and the queue would be so long mm. that I would get timed out of the queue. And it wow. wasn't until there was enough people to play that I could actually get into a game. I so, didn't run into any issues with queuing. Um, uh, I, well, I sh- and it, it depended on the time of the day, really. Like, I had a couple times where it, like, didn't, like, did that to me. In fact, I had done the, uh, there was, so there's the solo mode and then there's the group of three mode. And I queued up for that a couple times and could not get a game at all. It wasn't until like the fourth day of playing that I actually finally got a game where I queued up with two other people. And that was the only game that I actually won the, uh, the, that round. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the best I did in solo was uh, uh, third place. Well, I should also mention too... Uh... I want to try to remember to do this. Can't promise you, but uh, the game does take up 2.22 gigs on your phone. Uh, so two and a quarter gigs. Keep that in mind based on your phone storage, which is honestly not too bad for a mobile. Like some of these mobile games can really fill your phone up where it's the only app you have on there. Yep. Um, Trying to think if there's anything else in replayability that I wanted to mention. I, mainly the thing was the, the cues were sometimes not very good. Yeah, and being able to jump right back in is pretty important to replayability. Where, uh, you know, like if you're playing uh, uh, Fortnite, you could queue right back up right at the game over screen. And um, so, and of course, with Fortnite, it's popular enough where it's just going to dump you right into a game. This is true. Judgment. All right, so at the end of each episode, we decide whether the game deserves our seal or not and requires a two-third vote to be approved or denied. Uh, Mark, or do you want to read Mark's uh, thing, Jeff? Let me, uh, what's up here? Uh, Mark, what what did you think? You've been awfully quiet this week. Um, My review is that the game I played matches between seven and eight. I thought the game looked good, and the maps were big enough to allow for exploration without thrusting you directly into battle. The matches I played were sparsely populated, and when I did encounter other players, the shooting mechanics were the reason I didn't enjoy the game. The buttons were too congested, and the auto-fire mechanic didn't work prop- probably, I think he meant to say properly, uh, like it should have. It's autocorrect, he texted, you know, I'm not, it's not a word choice error. Uh, loot was random, which I don't know if that's a criticism, but that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, this game doesn't get my seal. It's not trash, quote unquote, but it's not good either. So no seal from him. So Scott, uh, what did you think? I, I enjoyed playing the game, but the, the hardness of actually queuing up and getting into a group kind of like destroyed a little bit of for me because i was like i'd rather play in a group than play solo half the time and i don't know like it, it, there's too many rough edges on this game the mm-hmm. the lag the way that i was getting was a couple times actually destroyed like made me die because it lagged so bad um and it was you know it was consistently laggy like that it's like every single time that i encountered an enemy there was some form of lag or uh frame skips and stuff like that like unless i encountered them far enough away where i could take them out at a distance i had some issues there um i like the game and i kind of want to give it my seal but I, I'm, I think i'm gonna fall back on the is it gonna stay on my phone which it's not so it's not gonna get my seal yeah, and I th- I think the big thing, and it can't be understated, is how consistently, and Scott just said it, that when you need it to work the best and run properly the most is when you run into other people, and that's when the game takes a big dump in its pants. 
um, where performance wise, it doesn't work. The gunplay isn't fun. And that's the most important part. The, the, the battle Royale genre is filled with crazy, like just so many, whether it be on your phone or otherwise. And there's no reason to play this unless you're a hardcore final fantasy fan. And, but do the final fantasy fans and battle Royale fans, what's the Venn diagram on that? Do they really cross over that much? I don't know, but I, I think uh, I'll be honest. I think if you were going to play a final fantasy game online, you're better off doing like final fantasy 14. Yeah, absolutely. Which is really well regarded in the, in the MMORPG. I think that's a space where that crossover between people who are a fan of the old school JRPGs, is going to cross over a little more. Whereas this just feels kind of like, a cash grab, I guess. Maybe not a cash grab. That's not the right word, but it feels forced. Yeah, it feels like we should make a battle royale. And I think that uh, in general, we've had several fantasy based battle royales. We've had the the high res one uh, realm royale. We had the uh, spell break and then we've had this and all three of them have been kind of bleh, right. Lackluster. Um, yeah. And so. I think maybe it's time to lay that to rest. <laughs> Everybody's had a go at it and try something else. Yeah. So, no, it does not get my seal. It's universally. And it, and like Mark said, it's not trash. It's not like just a, a, a piece of hot garbage that we had to try to play. It's a functioning game, but it's in a genre that's already filled up with great battle royales. And they're free to play. And so there's no real reason. There's no advantage that this game has over any of the other ones. Yeah. And I would say that the player base, if it dwindles any further down, you're not going to find enough games to even be able to play it. Yeah. And I don't think the Final Fantasy name is enough to drive people to this game. Personally. All right. So this is not budget arcade approved. Uh, Do we... What was that game Mark wanted to play next? What was that chat? I think it was Diarrhea Castle, but I got to check. Oh, here it is. Um, Rogue Land. Is it free? Let me check. Yeah, it's free. Okay. Rogue Land. Rogue right, so Space Land. The next game we're going to play is Rogue Land. Rogue Space Land. It's by Huge Games. There's three U's and huge. I'm installing it. Does that right make now. it extra huge? It makes it huge. I'm not going to do that again. It's annoying. Hey there. If you want to get in touch with us, you can do it on the internet. Facebook.com slash Budget Arcade. Twitter and Instagram at Budget Arcade. How about TikTok and Twitch? That's Budget Arcade podcast on those platforms. If you want to help support the show, you can do so on our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash budget arcade. You can join our Discord and earn points by voting in our polls as to what each host will decide on an upcoming game. If you get it correct, you will earn points that you can use in our Discord store. You can get things as access to our Patreon channel on the Discord, as well as t-shirts, or a t-shirt. That I've um, personally worn. And speaking of t-shirts, we are going to be getting the uh, Ubisoft t-shirts. Ooh, yeah, uh, that's a quick turnaround. <laughs> right? This Our new uh, t-shirt manufacturer is uh, Bar None. Is that the name top. of them? No, no, they're just a top notch. They're like... okay. On top of their game, unlike the last one we used to have. Wow, that's a dig. It is. Music <laughs> is provided by Stimage, and you can download his music at metroidmetal.com. And game on. You coming to bed, hon? Yep, honey, I'll be right there. Just got to turn out the light. Ow! Ow! Some things never change, like your kids always leaving tiny toys on the floor for you to step on, and Geico saving folks lots of money on their car insurance. Sweetie, 
I think I left the downstairs light on. P- please don't make me go. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. 